We have previously transformed the state variable system directly to the modal canonical form by using eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In this video, we first stand back and give an overview of this process, and then we prove our method for calculating eigenvectors. The conversion to modal canonical form using eigenvalues and eigenvectors might not be clear to you at this point. For this reason, we discuss how things fit together on this page. As a reminder, the problem we want to solve is this. Given a state variable model of a system, we want to transform the states of the system using the transformation matrix P so that the transformed system is in the modal canonical form. We only consider the case where the poles of the system are distinct and real. Refer to the textbook for other cases. We have seen previously that the poles of the system are also the eigenvalues of matrix A. What we then mean by the modal canonical form is that the matrix capital lambda is a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues of A on its diagonal. We have also previously seen that the transformation matrix P that converts the system to modal canonical form has the eigenvectors of A as its columns. Note that we assume that the matrix P exists and that it is non-singular, which is necessary for the transformation to exist. It is possible to prove this, but we will not do this. Refer to the textbook for details. We have also seen that a nice way of calculating the eigenvectors of A is to construct the adjoint of matrix lambda I times I minus A, and any non-zero column of this matrix is then an eigenvector corresponding to this eigenvalue. We have not proved this result yet. We will do this on the next page. With this overview in mind, let's conclude this page with a few remarks. Matrix capital lambda has the poles or eigenvalues of A on its diagonal. If you just want to calculate capital lambda, you of course only need to calculate the eigenvalues. You don't need to calculate the transformation matrix P by calculating the eigenvectors. Of course, if you want to calculate the rest of the modal canonical form, you have to calculate matrix P. Since the scaling of the eigenvectors are not unique, the scaling of the columns of P are also not unique. This means that the scaling of vector B bar and vector C bar will not be unique. These vectors will therefore not necessarily be the same as the ones we previously used for the transfer function to modal canonical form transformation. Let's now prove our method for calculating the eigenvectors of A. The result we want to prove is on the left hand side. It says that for matrix A, the eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue lambda i is given by any non-zero column of the adjoint of matrix lambda i times i minus a. The core idea of the proof is that we combine eigenvalue and eigenvector properties with a property of the adjoint matrix. The result follows directly from this. To recap, if this equation holds for matrix A, non-zero vector VI and scalar lambda I, then lambda I is an eigenvalue of A and VI is the associated eigenvector. We can rewrite this equation as matrix lambda I times I minus A times vector VI equal to the zero vector, which we have done in a previous video. From this, we can also write down the eigenvalue property that the determinant of matrix lambda i times i minus a is equal to zero. We also make use of a property of the adjoint matrix, which says that a matrix times its adjoint is equal to its determinant times the identity matrix. We apply this property to matrix lambda i times i minus a in this line. Since the determinant of lambda i times i minus a is equal to zero, the right hand side becomes the zero matrix. We now label the columns of the adjoint matrix as the vectors C1 to Cn, and we stick this into equation three, which gives us this line. 
Now we multiply matrix lambda i times i minus a with each of the columns, producing this line. If we compare each column on the left-hand side with the corresponding column on the right-hand side, we see that each column has to satisfy this condition. But when we compare this equation with the eigenvector equation, we see that they are the same. And we can therefore conclude that if the column vector C is non-zero, it is an eigenvector of A. Putting everything together, we can therefore say that a non-zero column of matrix lambda I times I minus A is an eigenvector of A. This result allows us to easily calculate the eigenvectors of a matrix A by hand, which in turn allows us to convert the state variable model to the modal canonical form.